Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Yay for Business podcast. It's me, Courtney Shaw, and in this episode, we're going to talk about realistic goal setting. Let's dive in. All right, so it is officially as of the time of this recording, the second week, uh, second work week of January. Um, by the time you're listening to this, it'll be at least the third work week of January. And I would love to check in with you on how you're doing. How are you feeling about this brand new year? Um, God, new years bring with them a lot of baggage, don't they? And it's a it's a wild time. One of the reasons I wanted to talk about goal setting and specifically realistic goal setting in January and not December, well, one of those reasons is because, well, we were talking about something else in December. We were doing our virtual conference, which was so fun. We're definitely going to do at least one, maybe two of those this year. So I'll let you guys know um, as we get planning for those. But is because once we start getting into the year, we start to see the reality of the year. And while it can be really nice to do lots of planning in December, over the holidays, etc., cetera, um, a lot of you, I did a poll on Instagram, actually don't. And a lot of you told me you've never really picked a revenue goal for your business before. Um, and some of you did. And I think there's a huge range of everything in between. Well, one of the things that I've been doing this year is, and one of my big intentions for this year is to prioritize taking care of myself over everything else. Um, I just really had to learn that lesson the hard way, as I think a lot of people do. I wasn't planning on learning it the hard way, and it wasn't like I ended up in the hospital or anything. But, you know, years of... uh, chronic entrepreneurship can build up in your body and um, you don't necessarily notice, right? You're like that frog in boiling water. It starts to boil slowly and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, it's like boiling. But you know, you've been sitting in it the whole time. So one of the things I've been doing is going on lots of breaks, getting out and doing nature walks. Uh, We're going to be talking about that in an episode with our very first podcast guest this month, which I'm super excited about. Uh, We're going to be talking about digital wellness. If you saw the documentary on Netflix, The Social dilemma, you definitely want to listen to that upcoming episode. But one of the things I've been doing is really scheduling and prioritizing going for walks outside, even when it's like gross and rainy. I live in Vancouver. It's raining all the time. If not doing like dance parties or like literally a two minute dance party in my living room uh, to pick up the energy, but also because taking breaks, movement, exercise, getting outside of nature, all these things are so good for your brain. They're so good for lowering stress and anxiety and cortisol. Um, They're so good at turning on your um, executive functions. If for those of you like me who suffer from ADHD, that's an executive function problem, right? So we need to move, uh, get our blood moving. So important. So anyway, now that we're into January, I think it's really time to talk about realistic goal setting. I think it's a more realistic time to talk about goal setting. And if you listen to last week's episode, I talked about um, anti-planning. I really talked about like the five things I really very much dislike about typical planning and goal setting. Real quick recap on that. Uh, those things are what I call, um, and I, I kind of like changed the names for them. So uh, delusional optimism or uh, toxic positivity. The second one is rigidity and attachment to your goals. The third thing I hate about traditional goal setting in the entrepreneur space is ignoring the facts from the present and the past and only looking at the future. And again, that kind of gets you into the delusional optimism. Um, The fourth mistake is planning too far out. So like trying to have the same level of planning for December as you do for January is ridiculous. Um, By nature, you're just going to have more details for the things that are sooner than later. Um, And then the fifth one is what I'm now calling goal shopping. So that's like picking goals based on what everyone else is doing and like picking those big round numbers like 100K or a million or five, whatever, because that's the numbers you hear other people talking about. So um, I like, I've got some Instagram content out about that. Last week's podcast, we'll go into those five things. I'm not going to get into those today. So make sure to catch up on that content. But basically, if you're with me until now, if you've already, you know, seen all of that, you already know about those five mistakes. Now we have this really big question. And this one really big question is the question that today's podcast episode is based on answering. Okay. So here's the question. Instead of picking your revenue goal out of your butt, or picking your revenue goal based on what everyone else is doing, 
what if you picked a revenue goal that A, excites you, and B, is totally doable and achievable based on, get this, reality. (laughs) Okay, so I know that question probably came off as like full of sass and sarcasm, and it totally is. I'm trying to crack you guys up. That's part of my personality. Um, But I also want you to know that I asked that question with zero judgment. I'm not like telling you like, oh my God, you're so ridiculous because you're making these mistakes. I want to remind you that I've spent the past 10 years making these mistakes. I've been making these mistakes for 10 years off and on. So I picked revenue goals out of my butt. I've picked revenue goals based on what other people are doing. Like that's basically how I did it for so long. And it kind of sucked. Um, I'm going to tell you guys something. I didn't write this in my notes for today, but I, I, I'm i thinking back because I want to make sure this is a true statement. I have never once hit the revenue goal that I set in the beginning of the year. Never. Like I, no, never. Because I remember there were like, there were like three years or something I was trying to hit 100K. And by the time I got close enough to 100K for it to be realistic, I was then going after like a bigger number. Like I was going after like 150 or 200 or something. I can't remember. It was a few years ago, but I always kept moving the marker so far away that I wasn't hitting goals. And in the beginning, that was okay. It was okay because um, I was like, okay, I'll try again next year. Okay, I'll try again next year, whatever. But the thing is, after 10 years of playing that game, you start to realize that the goal setting process starts to feel really depressing. Like, because you're just like, well, I'm not going to hit this goal anyway. Oh, what's the point? And you can get really jaded about it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's podcast episode. Before we get into this process, I do have a really special announcement I shared with you guys last week, um, but I want to remind you and give you some more details. Uh, I'm going to be hosting a in-depth planning 2021 planning workshop just for our Gay for 100K clients on January 27th. It will be recorded for all of my clients. So for those of you listening who are clients, don't worry. Uh, It's great if you can come live, but I also know we have got you guys around the world and that's not always possible. We're going to be giving you like the calculators you need for this, like literally spreadsheet calculators you need for this. Um, We're going to be talking about exactly what you need to do this year to hit your very doable yet awesome and life-changing goal, how to pick that goal, um, the mini goals that need to be associated with that goal. Um, I'm going to be sharing all of that at the workshop. And like I was kind of starting to say a second ago, after 10 years of business, this is the best, most sane, practical planning process I see out there. Um, I'm kind of creating this in reaction to 10 years of fatigue on how normally goal setting is done. I am so sick of workaholic entrepreneurs telling me to 3x or 10x my revenue goal. I'm so sick of telling people I'm not thinking big enough. I'm so sick of people projecting on me that I should be making more money. I'm just so sick of all of that. Um, And so I want to present a very different method for my clients. I want to set a different standard. Um, So again, this workshop is going to be amazing. You're totally invited, but you do need to enroll in Yay for 100K uh, before then. You'll want to apply first. Go to CourtneyShaw.com forward slash apply. Link is in the show notes and all that's in my link in my bio on Instagram, everything, everywhere you could possibly want to find it. Uh, When you apply, we take a look at your application. Uh, We look at like what we think is the best fit for you. Uh, If we think Yay for 100K is a great fit, then we will send you to a private training to give you my full process for how to add 100K to your uh, business in the next 12 months. That does not mean 100K has to be your goal. And I talk about that at the workshop. And if you're like not quite ready for Yay for 100K, Okay, that's no problem. What we'll do is we'll let you know what we want you to like, what we think the next kind of steps are for you, um, so that you can get to that point. So we don't want to just like shove everyone into the program, even if you're not ready. We want to make sure that we really curate uh, you to the right place. So if you have any questions about the planning workshop, about Yay for 100K, about applying, you can send me a DM on Instagram at Courtney Shawl. Um, though I'd love to have you join us in the program. I'm way more interested in just chatting with you and getting to know you and seeing like how we can help you uh, achieve your goals. So send us a DM. Like we're not going to be, we're like anti-pushy sales. We won't do that with you. Okay. I'll be truthful with you and honest, but I'm not going to push you. Okay. So 
Let's get into it. Let's talk about this planning process, this antidote to typical planning and realistic goal setting. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get in the right mindset. And there are, let's see, there's three things I wanna share with you about my goal setting mindset that are different than what you've probably ever heard before. So you wanna make sure you listen through this. Don't skip ahead. Um, The first thing I want you to know about planning is planning is all about discomfort. What? Isn't it supposed to be fun and rainbows and unicorns? No, by definition, think about this. By planning to hit a goal, we are literally facing the gap between where we are right now and where we wanna be. We're literally looking at like our, (laughs) the thing we don't have straight in the face and acknowledging we don't exactly know how to get there. So if you're like, well, I want this, but I don't know how to get there, that's okay because that's the point. Like, I'm not saying by realistic goal setting that you shouldn't have any kind of stretch or you shouldn't push yourself at all. I'm saying I don't want us to be doing this like, I have to 2X my business every year or I have to like um, hit 100K if I just started my business or whatever. We want to share with you uh, a range of goals that you can hit and understanding why each of those goals exists, okay? And that I'll talk about way more in depth at the workshop, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit in this episode as well. So by definition, planning is is about discomfort. It's like, and also like not only is it we're looking at the gap, we're also trying to get to something that we've never done before. So if we've never done it before, then we don't know how to do it or else we would have done it already. So like you don't have to have this, like I have to have all the answers before I get started. Planning should feel uh, a little bit nerve wracking, a little bit uncomfortable. All right. So no worries if that's how you're feeling. That's a good thing. We, We want that. If you're not feeling that, you're probably either like, really deluded, right? Like about what you're doing. These are the people who come and they're like, I'm making $500 a month right now, but I want to be making $100,000 a month. Like, yes, we get those people coming to us. No, we do not work with them. Um, Because if someone is that delusional um, about what's going to happen in the next 12 months, we are like, they're not ready for us. So um, (laughs) it's a little bit of a rant, but uh, I want to make sure that you know that it should be a stretch and we'll talk about exactly what that looks like and it should be uncomfortable. Okay, the second mindset thing is that Defensive pessimism is your superpower here. So, huh? Defensive pessimism? What the F is that? Okay, so I learned about the concept of defensive pessimism in my nerd crush Adam Grant's book, Originals, which is so good. If you are a nerd like me on um, like psychology and like business and stuff, um, Adam Grant is an organizational psychologist, i.e. like business psychologist. Um, And he is one of the most prolific researchers of our time at the Wharton School of Business. So I, I just, I love him so much. He's written so many great books. He has a new one coming out like next month. I'm so excited. But he introduced me to this concept of defensive pessimism and realizing it's a good thing. So I took this from Wikipedia and, you know, we can talk more about, I could do a whole podcast episode about defensive pessimism if you guys want. Let me know. Send me a DM. Just be like, more about defensive pessimism, please. And we'll uh, we'll get that in the books. But here's how Wikipedia defines defensive pessimism. Individuals use defensive pessimism as a strategy to prepare for anxiety-provoking events or performances. Hmm. Like maybe a big goal. That's scary, huh? All right. When implementing defensive pessimism, individuals set low expectations for their performance regardless of how well they have done in the past. Defensive pessimists then think through specific negative events and setbacks that could adversely influence their goal pursuits. By envisioning possible negative outcomes, defensive pessimists can take action to avoid or prepare for them. Using this strategy, defensive pessimists can advantageously harness anxiety that might otherwise harm their performance, okay? So if you are an anxious entrepreneur, if you're the kind of person who goes to worst case scenarios, um, if you're like me, I do this. This is something I want you to harness. It is a strength. Now, if you're listening to this, you're like, no, I don't really do that. Like I prefer to like positivity, positivity, positivity. That's okay. You're probably what's called a strategic optimist. And in that case, that's all right. But what I find is, and talking to a lot, a few people, a handful of people about this so far, is everyone kind of feels like they're a combination of both. 
So what Adam Grant talks about in originals is that if you are feeling uh, defensively pessimistic, right? If you're kind of like, this isn't going to happen. There's all these things that are going to get in the way. Like, da, 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 like harness that. Like, let's go into that. And that my goal setting process we are harnessing defensive pessimism. That's the reality filter that we're putting on our goal setting, okay? Um, so we wanna set the bar a little low. We want to like plan for worst case scenarios. We like not to like, we're not gonna catastrophize. That's not what we're doing. But we're strategically defending ourselves against potential issues. And in doing that, what happens is we allow ourselves to then go into what we're doing uh, like full throttle. So just a small example for this before we get to the next thing. I totally was a defensive pessimist about our conference in December. So back in like October, early November, I had a huge amount of anxiety about our conference. I was overwhelmed by it. I was like, this isn't going to go right. This isn't going to right. Like I had like, we're not gonna be able to handle it. It's going to be too much work. Like it's going to be a disaster. And so I needed to go through a process of sort of like planning for a worst case scenario, like planning for me not getting like anything done, planning for all the tech to break, planning for all of that. And then once I did that, I was totally fine. Like I had no anxiety after that. I just felt good. Like I knew what to do. I knew how to move forward. And so I just want to share that with you because again, I feel like in our online business space, it's all positivity, positivity, positivity to the point of being toxic. Okay. And delusional. All right. The third mindset thing I want us to have in place here is, and I need to hear this for myself as well. So I'm going to say this to myself as I say it to you. Your year is not going to go according to plan. We do not make plans and set goals in order to have certainty. Okay. And I think a lot of you guys out there who are avoiding setting revenue goals, which let me just say, like, a business needs revenue goals. Like, I do totally believe that a business without revenue goals is mm, a business I'm not going to want to, <laughs> I'm not going to trust. Like, the revenue is, it's the blood, it's the oxygen of your company. So, if you don't want to set revenue goals, A, we need to look at that. But if you like outright refuse, maybe you shouldn't have a business. Like, maybe you need to work in someone else's business. Like this is part of the responsibility of running your own business. So I am going to say that because I do know there's been times that I got like really anti-goal setting. That's because I had some ish in my brain that I needed to work through some um, like past trauma around goal setting. And I, you know, I don't mean trauma, like some huge event, but just something that was making me like really resistant to it. If that's happening for you right now, that's okay. But I don't want you to just not do goal setting. Like we do need to look at projecting revenue and all of that because otherwise you're not going to be able to plan for budgeting, for resource management, for expenses. Like again, these are things you have to do as a business owner. So your year's not going to go according to plan. We don't pick revenue goals in order to have certainty. That's one of the mistakes people make. They pick a revenue goal and then they act like, oh, because they picked that revenue goal, that's what's going to happen. So la-di-da. Um, No, you pick that revenue goal so that you can backtrack and create a plan to hit that revenue goal, okay? Uh, We plan so that we know what to focus on, what projects to take on, what things to say yes to, and what things to say no to, which is probably more important, all right? So those are the three mindset keys here before we get into my goal setting process. So for you guys, I have a four-step goal setting process here that I'm going to touch on. Now, again, I'm going to tell you places where I'm going to be talking way more in depth at our 2021 planning workshop. And again, you do have to apply for Yay for 100K. You do have to enroll in Yay for 100K, but you have to apply first in order to attend the workshop. It is only for our high-end clients, um, but you're totally invited. So just make sure to apply before January 25th so that we can make sure to give you enough time to enroll before the workshop. Okay, so the three-step process, or sorry, four-step process, excuse me, the four-step process. The first step, is we need to pick our revenue goal range. Keyword, range. Oh my God, I can feel the size of relief happening already. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about the difference between a realistic goal and a unicorn goal, okay? And really the big difference is that a realistic goal is based on data, it's based on math, it's based on facts, A unicorn goal is based on desire. It's based on dreams. It's based on um, 
just like what sounds super exciting, right? And there's nothing wrong with having both. In fact, I want you to have both. In fact, I want you to have more than that. I want you to have three goals, a Goldilocks goal in between there, all right? But you're gonna have your realistic goal. Sometimes I call it the keep the lights on goal. You're going to have your unicorn goal, right? Just like shoot for the stars, moonshot goal. And then in between there, there's a Goldilocks goal, kind of a sweet spot for stretching, okay? So in order to pick those goals, you need to know a few things. Now, I'm going to be sharing a calculator for this at the workshop, but I'm going to tell you what the data is and you can kind of play with it yourself. All right. So the first thing you need to know is what was last year's revenue? I'm going to take a sip of my tea while you while you think on that. What was last year's revenue? And if you don't know and you're already goal setting, red flag. We need to pause. You've got to know what you did last year. It doesn't have to be down to the scent. Maybe your books aren't completely finished, um, but you should know in a good, like, <laughs> good estimate how much you did last year. Looking at the numbers, not like what you think you did. What do the numbers actually say? All right. Now, the second thing you need to know is what is a realistic growth rate for your business this year? Okay, so when I talk about like you don't need to 2x your business, it's because I, in the 10 years of my business, there was only one year that I essentially 2x my business, and it was when I went from 30, about 35K to 60K, which isn't even exactly 2x, but that's like the closest that I got. Okay, other, other than that, I have a pretty good range of between like 20 and 50%, and 30% is sort of the amount that I know is like very reasonable and doable. So I know that for me, 30% growth year year after year is a very realistic amount because I have the data to prove it. Now, you might not have not have the data to prove it. That's totally okay. Most people listening probably don't have the data to prove it, but I want you to use maybe my business as an example is there are people out there, right? Like I've got friends out there who are in their like 20s who are making millions of dollars. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I am saying that if you aren't like if you don't identify as like a super effing ambitious like like workaholic like go 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 like person like if you don't like eat sleep and breathe your business that probably isn't going to happen in the first year. Like I just I hate to say that. I kind of want to fight myself even saying this, but I really do think in my observational experience the people I've seen grow that fast, they might not realize it, but compared to other entrepreneurs, they eat, sleep, and breathe their business. So like I tried that on, it's just not who I am. So like if that's not who you are, like don't try to make that who you are, be who you are, that's gonna help you have the best growth. But you do need to know what's a realistic rate of growth for your business you know, for a year. I think 30% is a great a uh, realistic amount. Now, that might shock you. You might go, oh my God, that's not enough. That's the reality of picking a realistic goal. But that's why we don't just have a realistic goal. We also are gonna have a unicorn goal, but we need to have that realistic goal that's based on facts and data, not drama from your emotions and your brain, okay? So the third question brings us to the next part. Okay, the next end of the spectrum. What's your dream amount of revenue for the year? Like, what would you just love to make? All right. So maybe that is your 100K. Maybe that's your 200K, whatever it is. Right. Like what would be just like amazing for you? But it's it, it feels impossible, but not like totally outside of the realm of like <laughs> the universe. OK, so I know there was a time when 100K was that goal for me. And I'll just tell you right now, like that for me right now would be probably like a million. Um, I'd be like, wow, like that would be that would be fucking awesome, but the numbers aren't adding up to get there. Like we'd need like a significant amount of growth. Um, but if I thought about making like 10 million, my brain just wouldn't even be able to calculate that. Okay. So that's how you kind of, it's very <laughs> an exact science, but I think you kind of have a sense for what that number is for you. And that's tends to be where we get those big round numbers, right? Those quarter million, half million, million, a hundred thousand, whatever it is. Um, okay. So I like a hundred thousand for everybody. And that dream goal, that might be a three-year goal. Like that might be like realistically a three-year goal, but you're going to play with it as a thought experiment for this year. Okay. So that's the third question. The fourth question is how much of your revenue is going to come from your signature service versus your signature program. 
All right. Now, this is something I talk about a lot more in the um, exclusive training for those who apply for Yay for 100K. So if you want access to that, you will have to apply. And if you end up enrolling, then you'll be able to attend our 2021 planning workshop. Okay. But if you want to know more about that business model, why I recommend that business model, why I teach that business model. um, And what I mean by business model is having a signature service and a signature program slash course, if you want to call it that, um, then that's where the resources are on that. Okay. So what percentage? Now, if you are just starting, it's probably a hundred percent service. Okay. If you are in that, like, Ooh, I'm ready to kind of like launch a course. It might be like 80% service, 20% course. If you're like, I've already set up my business model. Maybe you're already in yay for hundred K and you're like, looking at that, maybe you want it to be like, uh, maybe you're somewhere between like a 70, 30 split and a 50, 50 split. If you're like well along the way here and your course is proven and like, then you just move it majority course, like minority service. Okay. But we want to realistically look at your numbers from last year. What were the percentages? Now, if you already know it's a hundred percent services, well, it's probably going to be close to that this year. If you definitely want to launch a course this year, maybe do like 90, 10 or 80, 20. That's conservative. That's, I want you to be conservative with this because I'd rather you book too many clients, make too much money from your clients and then make too much money from your program, then you depend too much on the program and then you don't book enough clients and then the program doesn't do as well as you wanted, which is what most people do. So be conservative with the amount of clients, like make that a higher percentage than you think it's going to be. And that's the fourth thing you need to know. All right. Then with those questions that can tell you what is realistic for this year, what is like a dream for this year, and then what's going to be something reasonable in between. Again, I'm going to have calculators for that at our workshop. If you are a yay for client or yay for 100K uh, client, then you'll be able to attend that. Okay. The second step in my goal setting process is to calculate our target numbers. All right, I know that sounds like real nebulous and like, oh, boring. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So now that we know our revenue range, somewhere from our realistic goal to our unicorn goal, now we're gonna talk about like, what are the targets we have to hit to get there? All right, so here's the thing. Here's my warning. You cannot calculate these numbers if you don't have a clear sales process in place. Um, Again, I'm gonna plug you for 100K because like, I mean, I created this program for a reason. That's what we help you do. I've worked with service providers. I actually have a friend I was working with, um, talking to over the holidays, and she's a proven service provider, but we realized she didn't have all the elements of the um, sales process in her services. So she was feeling very stressed about, like, for her, clients had always just come from, like, referrals, and they were just always there. And now that she's planning for growth, she's like, oh, my God, but I don't know how to, like, estimate because I wasn't tracking, like, how many leads I was getting and how many client applications. I got and how many sales calls I had. So I don't know what to shoot for in terms of like those, those indicators of how many clients I'm going to get. Right. So you do need to have that process set up. Again, I'll talk about that a lot at the a private training after you apply for Yay for 100K, but this is what we do with our clients. Okay. So here are the things you need to know for service providers. You ready? Write this down. How many clients do you need to hit your revenue goal? right? And you're going to need a range again, like we'll have a calculator for that, but you need to know the range. How many clients would I need to hit the realistic goal? How many clients would I need to hit the um, unicorn goal, right? Per month, per quarter, you know, per week even, right? So we want to know those numbers. All right. That's clients. That's the first number. All right. Then how many sales calls will you need to book in order to book that number of clients? Well, in order to do that, you need to know your sales call conversion rate. Now, I teach a sales call um, method that I'm actually starting to call it booking calls because they convert so high, you're basically just booking the client. And this is based on having like a great work with me page and like the whole process being set up. But they converted about 90%. Now, to be conservative, we say for your projections, 80%, all right? So let's assume you're gonna book 80% of the people you got on a sales call with, all right, then you need to do the math. In order to book the number of clients I need for each of these revenue goals, how many sales calls would I need for each of these goals, okay? It's gonna be very easy if you get the calculator. (laughs) Um, It doesn't, like, literally you plug in a couple numbers and it all just, 
pops out, okay? Um, all right, then we back up another step. In order to get that many sales calls, how many applicants do you need? Because this is this is the process I teach, okay? So you're gonna have an application for your service and most of those people are gonna get on sales calls, probably 90%, okay? So if I have 90% of my applicants booking sales calls and I have 90% of those calls booking clients, we need to reverse engineer the math to get back to how many applications do I need? Well, once you know how many applications you need, now we can get into, and we're going to get into this in step four, but we're going to get into, um, oh, sorry, you know what? <laughs> I just realized uh, that I labeled it step four, but it's actually step three. So we only have three steps here. Okay. So once you know how many applications you need, you will know what marketing activities you need to do, which we'll talk about in step three. Okay. All right. So that's for our service providers. You need to know how many clients you need, how many sales calls you need to book and how many applications you need based on your conversion numbers. All right. For course creators. All right. Now, if you have both, you need to do both of these things. If you're launching a course or a program, a signature program this year, here's what you need to know. How many launches are you going to do? And what is your revenue goal for each of those launches? All right. Then based on that revenue goal, you know, for each of those launches, how many sales are you going to need of your course for each launch? Well, you're going to need to know the price of your course for that, right? Well, you need to pick that. We need to figure that out. We can't plan if we don't have these numbers. Um, and it's okay if you just kind of pick what you think and it can get refined later, but you have to start with something. Remember, one of the big planning mistakes is rigidity. We don't want to be rigid. We're like, well, I don't know the exact price, so I can't do any planning. Let's do ballpark, all right? How about $500, all right? How about $750, all right? So how many sales would you need to hit that, that revenue number? The third thing you need to know is how many people do you need in your sales funnel? And by sales funnel, I personally mean webinar in order to hit your sales goal. So your webinar is going to convert and conservatively at 2%. So if only 2% of people who sign up for your webinar enroll in your program, how many people are you going to need signing up for each of your launches, for each of your webinars, okay? Now we know how what our sign up goal is. Okay. Now we can back up even further and do another number here. How many people do you need on your email list? So your email list, I like to use a 1% conversion. So if we say 1% of your email list is going to enroll, or you can use the 2% here too. And the webinar actually can sometimes do more like, like 4%. Um, 2% of your email list is going to enroll in your program. Well, how many people are you going to need to have in your email list for each launch? All right. These numbers are essential. These calculators are like essential things we give our clients in Yay for 100K because based on these calculations, they can start to create realistic expectations and goals and then take actions to hit those goals. Well, that brings us to step three, which I kept calling step four. So we're simplifying as we go. Um, I gave myself a time, like a time limit to create my outline here. And so I label ADHD, I labeled the numbers wrong. So you can to just watch me correct things in the moment. Progress is better than perfection. Step three is determine how you're going to hit those targets. All right. So we know client wise, how many applications we need per year, per quarter, per month. We know course wise, how many people we need on our list when we do each launch with conversion rates we need to hit. So how do we determine how we're going to hit those numbers? Well, to me, this is where the fun starts. And because of that, I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Now that we know all of these things, we need to develop our marketing strategy. This is what marketing is all about because everything above, once you have a sales funnel in place for your service and your, and your course, like it's just like easy. It's really a lot to build that. <laughs> That's why we have a whole 12 month program around it. But once you build that, it's just amplifying it. It's just growing it. It's just putting more people in it. Okay. So our entire, I'm just going to caveat this, our entire yay for hundred K like curriculum is built on teaching you how to do this. So I cannot possibly tell you all of this in this podcast episode, but I definitely recommend that you apply to join us. If this is feeling like you're like, oh my God, this is what I need to do this year. Like, let's make it happen. Like the ROI is insane if you just follow the process and make it happen instead of trying to make it up yourself as you go and scotch taping different strategies together. What I'm teaching you here in this podcast episode is one overarching strategy for your whole business. Um, we don't like, it, it's just going to simplify 
everything for you, okay? So while I don't have time to get into like all the marketing strategies here, I do wanna tell you some questions that you should be considering as you develop your marketing strategy, okay? So first of all, for booking clients, okay? For getting those applications. Again, your goal if you're booking clients is how do I drive applications? How do I get people to apply for my service, all right? Even if you don't have the application funnel set up yet, you know that you're gonna set it up that way, right? That's just a project for you, but you know that your goal marketing-wise is not to book clients, quote unquote, but is to get applications, okay? So much easier, so much less stress. All right, so how have your past clients found you? Like, how can you get more of that? So if you have great clients, can you let them know that like your business is based on referrals and do they know anyone that would be a great fit? Clients usually know more people just like them. People in general usually know more people just like them. But you've got to let them know. You've got to get over your fears around like annoying them. They want to support you. They want to like, if they liked your service, they want to tell people about it. They just have other shit going on in their lives. So you've got to tell them that like it would be great and how like make it easy for them. How can they refer people to you? Okay. Um, what have you done to book clients in the past month? So I realize maybe over the holidays you're not like doing things to book clients and that's fine, but I want you to have a reality check with yourself because this is a wake up call we give our clients a lot in Yay for 100K is sometimes we're like, oh, like I'm not booking clients suddenly. And I'm like, oh, like what have you done in the past month? Have you done your like core things that you know you need to do to book clients? Oh no, I haven't. Oh, okay. Well, maybe just do those things. Guess what? A week later, they booked out clients. Like, seriously, I kid you not, it's that easy. But in our heads, we have this story that it's so hard and complicated to book clients that we don't do the things that literally are so easy to lead to clients. Okay. Um, you can get your ROI and you have 100K back just from doing that. Seriously, so easy. And that's like the least of the program. That's like step one, right? Of, of 12. So, I just had a little voice crack. That was funny. Okay, so that's some things you can do for your service. Uh, What I want you to start thinking about, though, is as you transition from services to programs, as you start leaning more into growing your audience, um, you know, right, because like clients for services are going to come more from one-on-one relationships and referrals. That's true for every service-based business. And program sales, course sales are going to come more from your bigger audience, your list, your social media following. So we need to build that social media following if you want to hit those launch goals, right? We're just reverse engineering the goals. So then my thought is, okay, what is your favorite social media platform to be on and how can you spend the next three months conquering that platform and focusing on it, right? How can you start building your audience there? All right, another question. How can you start driving traffic from social media to your email list? Now, I know a lot, I know people, maybe not a lot of people, but if you're writing blogs, like let's say you're like, oh, blogging is my like outlet, right? That's like what I do for marketing. That's awesome, but like blogging isn't like a platform, it's your website. And so people aren't just landing on your website. You have to drive that traffic there. So if you're not then repurposing that blog content onto Instagram or Facebook or in YouTube videos or something like that, you're not gonna grow your audience just from blogging. And then you email that to your list. Those people are already on your list. So yes, we wanna nurture our list, but that's not gonna help you to grow. So we wanna ask ourselves, A, how can I grow the social media platform that I'm conquering? But B, how can I drive traffic from that social media platform onto my email list? We're talking big picture here, right? Like we're not getting into the nitty gritty, but I want you to start coming up with ideas. All right, that's really like now we're in, how do you spend your days? Well, doing the things that are going to drive traffic to your application, to your, um, to grow your email list so that you can book as many clients as you want, so that you can have the launches that you want, so that you can hit your revenue goal. And you get to play with that within the range of your realistic goal to your unicorn goal and have fun with it. But that realistic goal is the one when you're creating your budget for the year. That's the one we're looking at, not the unicorn goal. We're budgeting for reality. And I hope what this does for you is it allows you to take a load off your shoulders and stop feeling panicked that you have to hit some huge goal just because it it would be really fun and it's your dream. 
That is when we start playing with thought experiments. Now, I'm not going to have the time to go into the thought experiments today. I will be going into that at the 2021 planning workshop. We're going to talk about as a CEO, as the visionary for your company, what are the big, you should be blocking out CEO time on your schedule to do big thinking. But what do you do during that time? Well, you need to be playing with project ideas, but you also need to be doing thought experiments. You need to be asking yourself big questions. And that's what's going to start to stretch your mind. It's going to start to help you to see like, oh, a million isn't so bad. And it's going to help you to hit those goals faster. Also, focusing on your realistic goal, your reality goal, is going to, like I said, calm your nervous system down because it feels doable because it is. It's based on math and data and facts, not dreams and like untethered like (laughs) clouds in the sky, which is fine. We want those too, but you know, we need both, right? Like I'm a big dreamer. My husband's more of like a reality guy. He grounds me, but I push him forward. But you need both of those things in your business as well. And as the CEO, you need to be responsible for doing both. What I was going to say is that that reality goal, now you feel more, you feel less stressed because you don't feel stressed about hitting this massively huge goal because you're like, well, I'll just hit the reality goal and that'll be totally fine. Like that's totally healthy. I can have a normal life and work schedule. I don't have to work all the time. I can enjoy my life. I can, you know, spend time with my family, whatever the things are that you want to do. You can start doing those things now. You don't have to wait five years, right? The irony of this whole thing is this. When you feel that way, you're more creative. You're more willing to take risks. And because of that, you're actually more likely to surpass your reality goal and hit a higher target. So that's the big plot twist on this whole situation. Um, But it's really key that you detach yourself emotionally from the big dream goal. That big dream is out there. We will chip away at it year after year. Keep dreaming about it. You will hit there. You will get 100K. You will hit a half million. You will build a million dollar business. Every single one of you listening can build a million dollar business, but you have to do it one step at a time. You have to hit 10K before you hit 100. You have to hit 100 before you hit 500. You have to hit 500 before you hit a million. So let's look at the step that's right in front of you and start there. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. It was a very juicy one. I'm sure you probably took lots of notes. Take a screenshot of those notes and share them with me at Courtney Shaw. Make sure to tag me on Instagram so I can reshare them. I think this was a really powerful episode. If you want to dive into the full strategy and if you are resonating with the things I was saying today, I really encourage you to apply to work with us inside of Yay for 100K. It's an incredible program. It's getting better by the minute. And we can send you the exclusive training on how to add 100K of revenue to your business in the next 12 months. That will help to fill in some strategy pieces for you, some of the how, like how do I actually make that happen? That training will. And then we teach you how to do all of that um, 12 months working with us inside of Yay for 100K. If you have any questions about any of that, send me a DM at Courtney Shaw. Don't be shy. I love your questions. I'll let you know if I can't answer it. If I need to do it, I'll address it in a podcast episode or something, but I still want to know your questions and uh, I want to engage with you. I want to get to know you, the people on the other end of this, you driving in your car or sitting in your bed or washing your dishes, whatever you're doing, uh, you know, walking outside. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I will chat with you next week. Yay. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you love today's content and are ready to finally start making a full-time income from your business this year, make sure to get on the wait list for my program, Yay for Clients, over at yayforclients.com, and you'll be notified the next time enrollment is open. Or if you're already booked with clients and you want to learn how you can turn your signature service into a signature program and add 100K of revenue to your bottom line, come apply to my group coaching program, Yay for 100K, over at CourtneyShaw.com forward slash apply. Thanks again and have an awesome day.